getting into us, you know, we're Adventures with Purpose. We are an underwater sonar search and recovery dive team. Uh, we travel the nation assisting families and law enforcement, and we're able to do so free of charge to both families and law enforcement as well. Um, and it, it's the community that puts us in the position to be able to do what we do. Um, how long has uh, Adventures with Purpose basically been in operation? Um, you know, from what I've read, you you were hell. This wasn't your background. You weren't a diver. I mean, this wasn't what you nope. you you did basically. Um, how did you and Doug end up? I'm sorry, you and Jared end up hooking up and making this thing happen. Yeah, so um, roughly about two and a half years ago, uh, I was operating a towing company here in Portland, Oregon, Elite Towing and Recovery. Uh, I received an email from a diver who reached out to me, uh, stated his purpose was cleaning up water environments by taking trash out. Um, he explained you know, how he had a YouTube channel with a few thousand subscribers and that he ran across a car here underwater in Portland. And would I help him? Nobody else would help him and wanted to, you know, basically said, you know, he, he wasn't able to pay me to pull it out. But if I was able to donate our services, come together, we could pull it out for a great cause. And uh, after getting the email, uh, absolutely. You know, I responded back and said, you know, I, I want us to be a part of this. Uh, me and my daughters, you know, we're, we're big outdoors here all summer long, swimming in the rivers, lakes. Anybody who knows Pacific Northwest, it's, you know, we protect our waters. We're real green up here, um, as we should be. And, sure. you know, we, Jared, Jared and I, you know, teamed up, clicked. Uh, we pulled that first car out. And that one car that he found quickly turned into over 25 cars that first summer here, just in the city of Portland alone. And, um, and when, what, what, uh, Doug, were these cars, I mean, were they just in you know, rivers, ponds, waterways, you name it, you know, just wherever he basically came across them. And was it him finding all these? And then you came out and, you know, did your part? Yeah. 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 He was spending his time underwater, um, you know, removing trash and stuff from the waterways. His purpose was environmental. And once he found that first car and we teamed up to pull that first car out, um, you know, he just kept running into cars underwater here. And I kept coming out. We kept filming all of these recoveries. And the viewers, you know, when it, where it started out with several thousand followers on YouTube, we start pulling these cars out together. It just started to blow up. You know, people like seeing these cars coming out, the, the waterways being cleaned up. And uh, shortly thereafter, I believe we were probably at about right around our 20th car pulling out. We pulled out a car unexpectedly with human remains in it. Mm. Oh, shit. Yeah, then that's and that's that's where we were actually on a live stream, and that that's sort of where that is where everything changed for us. Um, and not to mention, in finding these cars, we're using sonar. We're not just Jared wasn't just diving on cars. We're using sonar topside, you know, cutting edge, you know, fish finders, which the public knows them as, and we're not realizing that we're organically teaching ourselves how to read sonar that is extremely rare. Um, and viewers start reaching out to us. We see what you're capable of. We see you finding these cars. We have a loved one that is missing. Can you come help us? Um, we know we made that first trip out to you know help her find her son. Her son was exactly where she thought he was. And that's when we really knew that, you know, our um, skills that we built unexpectedly had a bigger purpose. And now we specifically target cases, cold cases, where people are missing and missing with a vehicle. So in that first one you pulled down, you found human remains in. Um, I, obviously, that was a shock. What, whose remains were those? Who'd you contact? Who came out and looked at it? How did you identify this? I mean, yeah. the license plate does a lot. I know yeah. that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so we, we were pulling the car up. Um, Jared found this car in an 80-foot hole. Uh, in the Willamette River, uh, just south of Portland, Oregon, and we just like it was any other car. Um, I'm there on deck. I have my driver there with the rollback. He's pulling it up, and as soon as the car breaks the waterway onto the boat ramp, Jared's next to the driver's side door, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa! Call the cops! Call it!" Because he's identifying human remains, and the driver's still in the driver's seat. 
seat belted in and uh it was just like zero to 100 in a split second so how do, did this guy just was he in an accident did he drive off the boat ramp was he is um you know we don't suicide? know for we don't know for sure but we suspect it was suicide his name was timothy robinson and he had been missing for 12 years you know his family stated to us that they simply thought that he vanished and went overseas somewhere. Just, they never knew. You know, that's going to be terrifying for like a family member. Like if today, let's heaven forbid, one of my children just disappeared. The hole that would be left in me would be. Oh, absolutely. You know, and, and, and I think that's a big part of this, you know, what they're doing is I don't want to necessarily say foul play, but a lot of the missing person, um, cases I'm assuming you guys get involved, involved with a lot of them are just going to be some of those cars that went off the roadway. Um, you know, ice, a bridge, you know, they, they were driving from this location to list this location and we never heard from them again. Um, and so you're, it's just you're, that, you're absolutely right. It's just that complete unknown. And that's the hard part about it. It's like, man, you know, my kid, my mom, whoever it was, they left the house and they're heading over to such and such his house and never to be seen again. Their car's never found, you know, cause yeah. from, you know, the, um, I guess ones that, you know, missing person cases that have, uh, you know, unusual circumstances, or, you know, we think there's some sort of a crime, you, you're going to find a car, you're going to find something that goes, man, something happened here. Um, yeah, when just, yeah. they completely vanished like that. And that's why I think it is just, just amazing that you guys are able to get out there and do it. Mowing the lawn. Yes. Mowing the lawn, whether it be the yard out in front or behind the house or the one below on the body. Right. Or on the backside of the body. Right. Or any of those places. Well, if you're going to mow the lawn, what do you need? You need a lawn mower. The well, new lawn mower 4.0. 4.0. It's a big one. They sent us some of these. We tried it out. Not on each other. We've we've done it on the own privacy we, of our we, home. We did try it out on each other, but we're not going to tell everybody that. The uh, and man, these are awesome. <laughs> no, they actually they are fantastic. Listen, I have uh, my entire adult life. Um, I have been a fan of body maintenance. I guess would be the term to use hygiene. Body, body hair maintenance hygiene. Exactly, it's for a hygiene thing. Um, and I have gone through different things through the years. And this Manscape 4.0, the lawnmower 4.0. I'm sorry. That was sent out to us. Uh, it's a great little box came with all kinds of stuff, man. You got the, the you got the four point in there. You got a little nose trimmer. Uh, you got a pair of underwear. Yeah, and you've got that ball deodorant. You, you oh, got, excuse me, you have that no no square deodorant. <laughs> yes, the no no yeah. So it's uh, it's a hell of a kit that they send out. And listen for all our listeners out there, whether you are a man yourself and you're looking for something to keep the body looking trimmed up. Uh, you yourself have a father, the, the young, uh, you know, the wives that are out there and so forth, get on manscape.com, get yourself the kit, get it sent out to the house. And then you can use code sticks on there as well. S T I C K S manscape.com. Yes. Beside the, the sonar, um, I definitely want to talk about how you guys use that, but I assume for some of the cases, uh, especially some of the, the modern day ones, um, you know, some of the other factors, we'll use that example. Someone's left, you know, my house heading over to Howard's. This is the typical route they would take. There's a body of water or a river they went missing. And you guys are using things like cell phones and stuff like that as well. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. that, that is that is correct. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll come into this these cases like any investigator would. You know, we're looking for, we're trying to determine lost person behavior. It gives us a good idea of where we should look. Are there, is there a last known location? Is there ev any evidence like a cell phone, uh, video surveillance? And, you know, when somebody's missing and missing with a vehicle, you know, I know missing persons cases in a whole is just a really tough thing for law enforcement in general. Um, the overwhelming majority of people who go missing always turn back up. Yep. Um, really? And there's, and, and there's, there's, a, there's a justification of use of resources agencies have to use and unfortunately you know it, you law enforcement has to be put in a position where they say either a this is something's bad happened here or b uh you know this is uncharacteristic we need to put all of our efforts into it right away and you know that's that's where we kind of come in after things have died and gone cold and we're able to uh, put together you know a, a new set of eyes to the case and also 
expertise in a real weird gray area that involves law enforcement, which is sonar. Um, you know, a majority of the people that we find are in areas where multiple agencies have already searched. Um, but because there isn't a necessary, like a flat out school, a training school for sonar, it's really easy to think you know how to read sonar. And unfortunately you don't. And, you know, and, and that's not to knock law enforcement at all right. whatsoever. It's just something that, and, and honestly, there's no reason for us to know what we know. And it's just really organic the way that we've learned it. You know, and, and Doug, I'm going to hit one of the deals. I've kind of written down a few of the incidents. I know you guys have come out and, again, you know, found uh, vehicles, found people. And and one of them here that kind of just stood out, you just basically exactly what you're talking about was a uh, a man by the name of Antonio Lopez, um, you know, yeah. that was missing out there. And I think it was February of last year, February 2021. Um, yeah, Valentine's and, and Day. Yeah, and multiple law enforcement agencies, I think the Coast Guard, uh, different groups came out searching an area, body of water, uh, over uh -huh. 10 days. And unfortunately, we're not successful in finding them. And then you guys did come out. And if the information I read was correct, again, just because you guys, as you said, almost dumb luck, you've learned how to use a sonar as well as you have. And it was something like within 10 or 15 minutes, you guys actually found the car. Yeah, yeah, you're you're absolutely correct. And um, yeah, that, that was a tough one. You know, um, we're we're never there to showboat. We're sure. never there to cowboy anything. We're just there to help. We really, we really understand that the the skills that we've developed are something rare, and we just want to use them as much as we can. Uh, and, and you know, thankfully now today with the success that we've had, you know, law enforcement is just there, open arms. You want to come help? Help us. You know, we've got requests all over the nation for different cases and also to train. Uh, but that particular case was uh, pretty tough, you know. Um, he, he was only in 12 feet of water. And even when we located him, um, the agencies that were there still couldn't locate him after we basically told them where they were. But if you're going too fast, if you're going with the current instead of against the current, you know, what you what is a car is going to look like a pebble, you know. So there's just, there's, it's not a knock on them. I'm just glad that we were there that day to to help find him and uh, bring him home to the, to his family.